All bodies are different and all bodies are visible. But a body that sits outside of the societal norm is punctuated by pathology and defined as an incomplete body, an unaccepted body, a body forgotten, a body that is feared. The visible body cannot be unseen, but a body that challenges the idealized body, which is statistically normal in form and function, is relegated to the margins of the society that this body inhabits, made invisible. Not all conform to the marginal roles they are ascribed, nor should they. How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the fourth of the month yet? Travel the world, you understand, girl? Waiting for my dollar ride. Shit, I can't hide. Life on SSI dollar. So that was a little taste of the musical arm of trip hop, a larger disability activist movement spearheaded by Leroy Moore Jr. So a little bit of Leroy's story will give insight into this movement. And like most stories, this is best told by the person who lived it. So, what is uh, SSI Dollars about for people? Yeah, so the song is SSI Dollars. Yeah, it's serious, but it's comic at the same time. You know, we're going to call out Macklemore while shopping at thrift stores. You know, that's, that's what we, we do in the SSI Dollars. So, it's, it's a comic, you know, and also it's serious at the same time. What was it like growing up? Oh, growing up in the 70s and 80s with a disability, being black, you know, it's really, you're isolated, mm -hmm. you know? So it's been a lot, a lot of long, a long time. I, I grew up in the suburbs. So we were the only black um, family in East Harvard, Connecticut. Can you tell us about your dad? Yeah, my dad back then, my dad was an NFL football player. He played for Buffalo, Detroit, Detroit Lions, Buffalo Bills, New England Patriots. This was you know, before OJ. So when my father was a football player, active, activist, you know, he had um, little ties to do the Black Panthers and you know, like, 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 like all families. My mother was, you know, my, my advocate, you know. His record collection that he had influenced you in oh, big time. music. Big time, yeah, that story is incredible. Yeah, one time I went downstairs in the basement, and you know, this is back in Connecticut where we had basements, you know. <laughs> so I went downstairs in the basement and I just like stayed there for hours just looking at his record collection. And we're pulling out records, and it's like, Barbie Winters, you know, Barbie Winters was on Christmas. I was like, what the hell is this? And I put on next, next one is Walter Jackson. Walter Jackson's on Christmas. I was like, what? We put on another one is Blind Willie Johnson. It's like, holy crap, you yeah. um, know? Let's talk about some of the posters behind you. Yeah. Yeah, what, like, what's, what's what? Well, yeah, as you can tell, I love Paul Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> I love his activism and his, his art. Yeah. The first, I think, it, for me, the first artist that that's an activist, you know, as, as a role model, mm -hmm. you know. So I just love love Paul Robinson. Jill Scott, I love Jill Scott. That's my girlfriend. Yeah. She doesn't know it. <laughs> she's she's my she's my wife. <laughs> What were you into as a kid, as far as music was? Like hard music. rock. Yeah. I was a hard rock. Yeah, I was like AC, DC, and Ozzy Osbourne. I love it. You know, it's definitely hard rock. Hey, Animal Hawk. Animal Hawk is like, fuck you on it. Yeah, I'm so hardcore. I love it. I'm so hardcore. Just only when when I was younger, you know, I had operations and stuff. 
So the outside looks like water. Mm-hmm. My fuck you. Well, fuck you, my mom. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it might eat crack. That's like me. It's like God. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So first I love hard drive, you know. Then 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 I got into the blues, you know. Ray Charles and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, most of my poems today deal with the blues, um, because I'm a big fan with the blues, and I've been dying to get to Mississippi to, um, to walk in my ancestors' footsteps. A lot of blues singers had disabilities, so, um, that's, that's my goal of this year and next year is to get to Mississippi. Mmm. 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 to me. No, not my baby. Going back down to the Delta. In the air. Hear yeah, them holler. Uh, sweating in the southern humidity. Black blind men on corners. Singing for the rent and dinner. Brian Willie Johnson moaned to me, wailing about black reality. No lyrics, no words. It's all about feelings. Free like a bird, but with no wings. Black blind men on corners, singing for the rent and dinner. Brian Willie Johnson moaned to me, wailing about black reality. Not one tear, Jim Crow fear. Michelle Alexander, yeah, it's still here. Let's all moan, trying to connect with our cell phones. All we want. So let's talk about Moan to Me as a song in the poem. Oh wow, Moan to Me has a history. Well first I wanted to pay homage to Brian Willie Johnson because it came from his song. And Brian Willie Johnson has a song. It's uh, something. If I had my leg, I would burn down this building. And he moans to all the song. And it's so beautiful. So I wanted to, you know, make that, you know, homage to, um, to Brian Lee Johnson. The, the music is done by Rob Denoy's Temple on the Trigger Hill Gang. And he's um, one of the co-founders of Crip Hop. So we've gotten a glimpse into Leroy's life talked about some of the influences that led him to become a disability rights activist, a music lover, a poet. And I gotta say, the time I've spent with him has been an absolute pleasure. He's one of the most jovial, positive, thoughtful people I've met in a very long time. And there's something about this positive nature that I, that I think led to the formation of Crip Hop. So let's go back to the source and find out what Crip Hop Nation is. So how I formed Crip Hop Nation was a long history of me being um, interested in music. I was always a music lover since the blues, always hip hop. And being an, an activist for people with disabilities. When Crip Hop offers the alternative to the negativity, I was at the inception of hip hop in the very beginning when it was party music, then on into conscious music, and then on into gangster rap. and. But here in Crip Hop, we don't follow age, gender. We don't follow, we, we can do what we want. Can we get the story of the, of where, how the name was born? Yeah, so the name Crip. A lot of people think Crip means, you know, Crips in the Bloods, you know. But if you look deeper in, in that history, um, the Crips, the gang in LA, had a disabled uh, member, and they say, I would call you cripple, they would destroy you, call you crip. 
So really, that, that name came from the word Crip Force. So we just taking it back and just like hip hop, you know, flipping it on its head and, you know, being able to go with it, you know. So we changed it with the K because we didn't want to get the Crips mad, you know. But, you know, even, even the Crips don't have a, you know, trademark on the underwear. <laughs> so yeah, so that, that's how the word became. Why is 2007 a special year for crypto? What 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 happened in 2007? Yeah, 2007 then? was our first um, hip hop CD. You know, so I think that really um, put us on the put us on the mark. Before that, you know, crypto pop was on um, KPFA. But I, I mark it with our first, you know, physical CD. First release, yeah. Yeah. What's going on, like, right now? So, internationally, Crip Pop in 2016 went to South Africa. And um, before going to South Africa, you know, Crip Pop is international, so I do a lot of um, social networking stuff, so talking to artists from all over the world. So what is your dream? I dream uh, five billion dollars. <laughs> in, in ones. <laughs> yeah, in ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think one of my dreams is to get to Mississippi. You know, because I've always wanted to go back where the blues started. Yeah, as a person with a disability, Going back where um, Josh White started to um, lead blind blues artists all through the Delta. Yeah. So I'd love to get back down there. Amazing. Yeah. That would be amazing. That'd be amazing. Yeah. 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 And you know what would be amazing? Another coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Coat and <laughs> little heater. Little heater. Yeah. Where's our speaker? My body probably won't make it. Put me in a wheelchair and push it down those Delta trails. Calling Mississippi, blind blues elders in the Delta. Do you hear me? I want to walk with my ancestors and Josh White Senior's footsteps, holding their hands pulling and pushing me. My body probably won't make it. Put me in a wheelchair and push it down those Delta trails. Calling Mississippi, Blind Blues elders in the Delta. Do you hear me? Under my arm, the book of Santa Mary's. And I have no fears. Walking, limping, and willing through blues trails, suspended by gentrification, Starbucks in the intersection.